Thank God it's Sunday! Welcome home church! Welcome to Lightcast Church Online, streaming here in New York City. My name is Pastor Michelle Ramirez because I am a pastor's wife. And our pastor here is Pastor Ronald Ramirez. And I am Kersey Ramos. I'm one of the primary primary leaders of Pastor Michelle and of course the cell leader of Team Ablaze. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening to wherever you guys are right now. And of course, like what, what Pastor Michelle, Michelle said, welcome home. Yeah. And, and of course, you guys know the drill, which is thumbs up, heart, and then share. And then of course, tag your friends and family. And of course, cell leaders, don't forget to tag your cell members. Yes, we keep sharing 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 the blessings yeah. amen don't be satisfied that you're here and by the way for those of you who have prayed for your friends for your families to be uh to your know the VIPs. lord your vips this is the best time to tag them or share the link Correct. to them so bring them with you today we are going to worship the lord together amen, amen. amen. speaking amen. of today our sermon for today is entitled Pressure, pressure is, is off. off. Yeah, and pressure is off. So, do you know, or maybe some of you doesn't know or don't know yet, that there are some pressures in our lives that we need. Yes, believe it or not, we need these pressures in our lives in order to survive. And what is the most pressure <laughs> that we need? Kersey? Blood pressure. Yon. <laughs> But not too high, not too low. So we need that pressure. And also, we have the air pressure, mm -hmm. the tire pressure. Your car will not move when you without, do, without the, the tire pressure. So praise God for these pressures that we need in our lives. So uh, I don't know what pressure Pastor Ron is going to talk about or going to deliver the message. But stay tuned. It, it's going to be a wonderful message. Praise God. Amen. Amen. Because it's from the Lord. It's from his word so uh let's our heart uh, let our hearts be ready for this mm -hmm. message amen amen so our, speaking of pressure <laughs> there are some filipino dish that we need air pressure uh no pressure cooker right pressure cooker. <laughs> so talking about filipino dish kersey what is your favorite filipino, filipino dish, dish? <laughs> yeah okay i like sinigang yeah, ah, particularly I think shrimp. No. Uh, unfortunately, yes. <laughs> Why? Yes, see, I'm a, I'm allergic to shrimp. <laughs> but it's so good. <laughs> yeah, how about yeah. you, Ate Michelle? Now I'm thinking cuz um Filipino eh, Filipino dish, I have a lot of uh, favorite Filipino dishes, but particularly the one that I love the most, I always um uh, order it <laughs> outside is sisig. <laughs> oh, yeah. Sisig. sisig. Yeah. No? Pork sisig or bango sisig. Wow. Ooh, yum. So, why don't you share your favorite Filipino dish? Comment down below and share it with everyone. Yeah. Just for fun. Okay? And Just while fun. we are waiting for our um, answer. Oh, si Mara agad. Oh, kare kare. Yeah. <laughs> I was going to say. <laughs> Well, yes. waiting for the answers, which I think they are already flowing sa ating, ano, sa ating live stream. Of course, we would like to greet everyone who are now here with us. Yeah, and we have 20, oh, 31 viewers. 31. And how many shares? Seven. Yeah, and seven guys, seven. Okay, we'll Who's set up Sinigang in the house. Yeah, and, oh. and si ano, Tito Jonathan Bjorch, Dining Ding. Oi, Dining Ding. Yeah, nutritious yun. Daming gulay. What else? What's your favorite Filipino dish? Come on, share Ooh. it down below. Caldereta by. <laughs> Yeah, Ninang Leia Maniti. Yeah, yeah and caldereta. Oh, her caldereta is really good. I <laughs> can't wait to try, try that. Again. <laughs> Very good. Try Actually, that. she cooks really good. Oh, so how oh, yeah, I miss. Dish. <laughs> okay, so what else? Oi, Sister Zenny, and dami. And dami adobo, <laughs> pancit bihon, and sinigang. Yeah, yeah. Tito Boy said, 
Adobo and Mungo. Mungo. Oh. Mungo. Pastor Ronald as well. His favorite is Adobo, Adobo. and Mungo. Uy, look at Sarah Joy. She said, Laing and Dinaing. Or is I it Daing? Oh, Daing. <laughs> Yan, sabi ni Kit, yeah. Pinakbet. Oh, Yan. Pinakbet. Yan. Anyway, so, oh, Sister Rika is, oh, <laughs> laing. Calling Nanay Ellen. <laughs> Calling Eddie. Nanay Ellen. And Sister <laughs> Sally. Yan. From Lightcast, who, may, who make um, very good laing. Mm-mm. Oh, sabi ni Kita Milet, is it food? Morcon? Morcon, yeah. Morcon. Morcon. Oh, yeah. what is that? Morcon. I've never tasted morcon here in the United States. Only in the Philippines. Mm. I haven't. I haven't. Anyway, let's keep on sharing. Let's yeah. keep on tagging our friends. So today, um, for the month of April, we have, of course, we encourage our people to pray, to help bless, serve their family, their friends, their loved ones mm-hmm. that they want to, um, to, uh, to know the Lord. Okay, Amen. so we prayed for them, we blessed them, and now uh, we have shared the gospel to them. And this month, we are going, by God's grace, by the power of the Holy Spirit, we are going to follow up on them. Yeah. So again, cell leaders, our 144, our cell members, let's just keep on praying for them. Let's keep on reaching out to them. And also, we have this follow-up mm-hmm. lessons. Yes. Yes. Connecting to them, connecting them to Christ, connect, and eventually connecting them to cell group and to your church. Amen. Anyway, if you have any questions about consolidation or preservation um, or follow-ups, um, just ask your cell leaders. Ask me, ask pastor. We are more than you know willing. You know, it's our pleasure to keep on uh, helping others, assisting others to reach out to your loved ones and to your friends. Of course. Yeah. All right. I think we have some more answers. Yan. By Ninang Susan Bjorge Bulalo. Ooh. Ah, Bulalo. Jake Pizza. Filipino. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. Filipino pizza is Filipino what? Filipino pizza. <laughs> Greenwich pizza. <laughs> Sweet <laughs> with ham and pineapple. <laughs> oh. Hawaiian. Yeah. All right. Who else are here? Oh. Hold on, madam. Oh, hi, Lorene. Lorene, good morning. We just got baptized last week. Yes, again, congratulations. Yeah, congratulations. To those who got baptized and who will be baptized, who decided to get baptized, congratulations to all, all right. of you. Thank, thank you, Lord. And, okay, yeah. so we keep on uh, fried fish and mungo. Wow, <laughs> Miss Sinaida. <laughs> Ang sarap. Oh, it's making me hungry. I know. <laughs> Just looking at this list ng food. Nako. Oh. Pizza with, with spam, spam and longganis. <laughs> Ay, nako. Okay, pizza, <laughs> spam. By the way, we are in a spring season and it's raining outside. <laughs> I didn't know that it's raining today. It was actually foggy before and yes. then umulan na. Okay, so let's make sure that we, before going out, we know what the weather is and also uh, we're prepared. If it's raining, Mm -hmm. then you have to bring your umbrella and don't forget your mask. I know a lot of people are already getting vaccines and all this, uh, yeah, vaccine, but let's make sure that we still um, have our mask on, our Mm -hmm. our, uh, sanitizer, so... This should be part of our routine now, right? So, again, church, let's keep on tagging. What else? Steak. Okay, Brother yeah. Jonathan. <laughs> steak. Beef All steak. All right. And see, Kuya John, Kuya John also said dinuguan. <laughs> Chocolate meat. <laughs> Are you sure? Okay, I'll bring some for you tomorrow. <laughs> anyway, so church, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you're at. This time is for the Lord, and it's all about Him. Amen. Amen. Um, he's been so good. He's been so faithful. Let's come together. Let's join together and celebrate His faithfulness and goodness over our lives. So again, our wherever you're at right now, it becomes an altar. So make sure that it is holy, it is sacred place, sacred moment before the Lord. Again, good morning, good afternoon, good evening. A blessed day to all of you. God bless.
Galatians 2.20 I have been crucified with Christ. It is no longer I who live, but Christ who lives in me. And the life I have, I now live in the flesh, I live by faith in the Son of God, who loved me and gave himself for me. Church, let's pray. Our Heavenly Father, thank you. Thank you, Father, for sacrificing your only begotten Son, Lord God, so that we may have life, Lord God, in you. And Lord, I am praying that as we celebrate you, as we celebrate your name, Panginoon, I'm praying, Lord, that you will forgive us, Panginoon, for all of our sins, any unrighteousness that we have, Lord God. Lord, clean clean it us, Lord God. Clean us, Panginoon. Purify us, Lord God. Sanctify us, Panginoon, so that we will be worthy of your presence. And Lord, I am praying, Panginoon, for Pastor Ron, as he delivers your message. Lord, may your Holy Spirit work in him, Lord God, and work with him, Panginoon. And also, Lord God, I'm praying, Lord, for all the household, Lord God, that they will um, take this seriously, Lord God, and where wherever they are, Lord, that it will be your altar. And Lord, we are looking forward to more souls, Lord God, who will be saved today. And also, Lord God, I'm praying, Lord, for each and every one, Panginoon, to really put their hearts out for you and only for you. Maraming salamat, Panginoon. And this we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. And now, church, let's all stand up and let's worship the Lord through music. Good morning. Good morning. How is everybody doing? All right, welcome again once again here in Lightcast Church International. So, so if ever we are, you are somewhere else in the world besides New York, good evening, good afternoon. So if you can just, you know, stand up wherever you're at and let's just take this time, you know, to focus in God and sing these songs and worshiping Him. All right, as He deserves it. Through you, I can do anything. I can do all things. Cause it's you who gives me strength. Nothing is impossible. Through you, blind eyes are open. Strongholds are broken. I am living by faith. Nothing is impossible.
sing, I believe. Lord God, and we'd like to remember, Panginoon, that we are nothing, Lord God, without you. And acknowledging you, Lord, and your presence in our lives, Panginoon. Truly, Lord, thank you. We are really thankful that you've never left us, Lord, in our lowest of our lives, or at the times so that we've been, you know, barely breathing, Lord, as we, you know, continue to strive, Panginoon. Thank you, Lord, for right now we're still here, Lord God. This Sunday, Lord, this this very time that we can, you know, pray, Lord, and ask for for this um, gratefulness, Panginoon, in you. Right now, as we sing this song, Panginoon, we just wanna, um, Lord, just declare the powerful, your your ever powerful presence in our lives, Panginoon, that we can just continue, Lord, pushing because you're there in our lives, Lord God, in the highest, Lord God, in the lowest of lows of our lives. Thank you, Lord, Amen. Even 
soul. Lord, your mercy is an overflow. You're too good to let me go. Should I dance on the heights? Or make my bed among the dirt? Your mercy is out every end. That you planned it from the start. I sing she'll dawn. She'll dawn come with wings. And find me fine. Side of the sea, there your head still fastens me. Yes, God, thank you, Lord. Ever closer to your heart. Oh, and I stand low, Lord, you're with me the way it goes. Should I rise so? Should I fall? I sing even so. Even Stephen, so. Lord, your mercy is an even flow. Should I rise or should I fall? You're faithful. You are faithful through it all. You're too good to let me go. I just want to thank you, Lord, for that I'm still standing here in front of, of you, my Lord. Lord. Asking you, Lord, for, for forgiveness, Lord, and uh, with a very grateful heart, Lord. You've still woken up, Lord, us from our sleep today. And just remind ourselves and uh, be, um, be uh, ever uh, thankful, Senior Father, for all the blessings of God, for um, taking care of us, Lord, for this uh, very uh, tragic times, Lord, this pandemic, why not? Lord, thank you, Lord, 
that um, you still thrive, Pinon, for your name. Lord, for, Lord, I pray for the people that are currently um, joined us right now. Lord, I pray you're going to be with them always and always. Thank you, Lord, for everything. We love you, Lord. In Jesus' name. Sabi po sa Bible in 2 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 7. God loves a cheerful giver. So as we give today, we will give faithfully and do it with a smile. Our digital giving is now available through Zelle, Venmo, Cash App, and PayPal at lightcast.nyc at gmail.com. Or you can hand it in to your cell group leader after gathering. For more information, you can send us a message here in our Lightcast Facebook page. Thank you! Sabi po sa Bible in 2 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 7. Sabi po sa Bible Lightcast Facebook page. Thank you! As weeks pass by, there is this strong conviction in me that this is not the time for me to worry. This is not the time to feel that fear and be selfish. But rather, this is the time to trust the Lord and depend on Him more. It has always been my desire to serve my cell group, to make them feel that I am here, always available, ready to serve them and help them, especially during this pandemic. On May 2nd, as far as I remember, my friend Sheena, my sister and I, were actually preparing the food boxes for them. So we delivered them on Queens, Bronx, Long Island, and even upstate. It was a busy and risky week for us, especially for our health. But we knew it was the Lord who sustained us. We praise God because He was the one who actually called and used us, especially during this pandemic. When Lightcast took part on discipleship, Pastor Michelle's goal for her primary 12, which I am part of, is to have our own small groups. At first, I don't want to participate in it because I know it's going to be hard. It is hard because I'm so busy with work, and plus, I had doubts if I will be able to take care of them or to lead them properly. I focused on the I cannot rather than the I can. But then, pandemic hit, and I got laid off. I believe God took out one of my excuses not to level up on my faith and also to step out of my comfort zone. During this pandemic, our group got bigger and bigger up until we have 21 ladies. And now, I have my team ablaze and I couldn't be happier. I am forever grateful for these six ladies and plus Mara, who is my co-leader. The fear of COVID in my family had given me the opportunity to share God's word to them. Being laid off had allowed me to pursue my bachelor's degree in exercise science. The night that my mom was intubated, me and my family, I shared the gospel to them and they, they all um, accepted Jesus as their Lord and Savior. And now we have a cell group with our family. 
I shared to them, I think it was Philippians 4, 4, 7, to rejoice in the Lord always, uh, to always be thankful, never be anxious about anything, and to and because God will give us the peace that we need. It's a humbling experience because it wouldn't happen if um, our mom didn't uh, pass away. Mm-hmm. It also made me uh, stronger. It felt like it felt like nothing can ever break me, nor uh, hurt me anymore. Because I have already gone through the worst experience of my life. Mm-hmm. Uh, I remembered when the time that uh, she's already gone. I didn't know what to do. I had so many sleepless nights, and it encouraged me to uh, study again uh, for my NCLEX and follow her path uh, being uh, a nurse. By God's grace and perseverance, I was able to make it, and I passed my exam. He's faithful. Yes. He's the most faithful. He's the most faithful. Like, don't just don't give up. If uh, something, if something worse happens to you there will always be something that um better days will better come. days mm-hmm. will come the best decision of my life is receiving jesus christ as my lord and my savior during covid my friend sheena invited me to a cell group and after that um i started uh, joining Sunday celebration, um, attending life class, and because of life class, um, I understood God's love for us and gained more knowledge about the Bible. One morning, my son called me because he noticed that I was up early in the morning. I told him that I was praying, and then he invited me to the prayer done. Uh, he became my inspiration because of the changes in his life, because he became a better person. So I attended prayer done, and then I started attending the Sunday service. And during the service, Pastor Ronald um, was praying to receive the Lord Jesus Christ, and that's what I did. My life before Christ was empty because I didn't have any relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ. And because of that, I hold grudges and I, and I can't forgive them easily. After I accepted Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior, I have restored my relationship with my family. Before, I used to be a bitter person person that is easily to get frustrated, get upset with people. But after receiving Jesus Christ, I became a very forgiving person and uh, easily to understand people. I encourage you, if you're alive also right now, God is not done with your life yet. You may never know this one here until you realize that you need the Lord Himself. Um, You will go to improve your relationship not just to the Lord, but to your loved ones as well. Romans 8 verse 28 says, And we know that all things work together for good for those who love God and who are called according to His purpose. So here I am encouraging you that with the whole pandemic situation, it may seem like it was a big setback for you, but it is actually God's setup for your comeback. I always say this, and uh, it's to trust and to obey. To trust the Lord with all your heart, with all your soul, with everything that you have. And to obey, to obey His word. Obey because, like we always say, or like we said, God is the most faithful. He will reward you in every possible way that the Lord can. Because God is God. He will 
he will always um he's true to his promises and he loves you that's why uh, we have to continue to trust and to obey in him yes actually i learned this from you sis yeah like to trust and obey like every time she says that it's just so powerful that um yeah because there's no other way yeah we should just obey. Um, we should just trust and obey mm -hmm. like there's there's no one or nothing can um ever make you stronger uh, other than god's love mm -hmm. it may sound cliche to be strong just to trust in him but it's always the truth mm -hmm. like um he will he will never leave you nor forsake you that's that's one thing that um uh, that was embedded into my mind that he's always there just trust him like no matter how many times you hear that people say it's just just accept it and it's true he's um, he's the only way and he will really never leave you nor forsake you mm -hmm. and as your shirt says <laughs> we are the two are children of the one true king Come on, church. Let's give that a big, big hand. Yep. All right. For those who are online, yep. Uh, come on. Um, uh, press what? Clap. Right. Emo emoticon. Right. Happy. There you go. Again, shout out to those who gave their testimony. And indeed, the Lord God had said that uh, all things work together for good to those who love God. And actually, it says there, for we know. All right. So we are. Uh, so that's Christ positive. We thank the Lord God for that. And that's a. Uh, uh, it's not the full story of what had happened, right, in Lycast and through Lycast, right, last year during the pandemic time. There's a lot more stories, but that's kind of like, you know, um, the, the ones that kind of captured what had happened last year. And uh, we thank the Lord God for giving us that opportunity. And do you know that I don't remember what's the anniversary of prayer done? Yeah, I don't really remember, right? <laughs> when did we start? But I know that, uh, you know, that uh, we, we, had, we had done it all throughout. And again, um, the only break that had happened was last week because I had been sick. And so um, tomorrow, we're resuming prayer dawn, right? So staff, reminding you, it's prayer dawn, right? Worship team, reminding you, it's prayer dawn. We'll restart tomorrow, all right? And security guard, reminding you, <laughs> join prayer dawn. Okay, all right, and uh, and um, um, today, today I'm going to talk about you know our message is about uh, Galatians 2:20. That is my life verse, right? So the title of today's message is "Pressures Off." Yeah, that's the title. Yeah, pressures off, right? Pressure is off. So let us read together Galatians chapter two, verse twenty. It's going to be on your screen, right on the screen, and let's read this together. Are you ready? And even those who are in, the, in um, you know, um, who are joining us online, right? Read it loudly. There you go. Right. So uh, you ready? Are you ready? Let's read this together. Ready? Begin. I am crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live. Yet not I, but Christ lives in me. In the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God, who loved me and gave Himself for me. And again, may the Lord God bless the reading of His Word. Let us go to the Lord in prayer. Lord God, we come to You, and we ask You, Lord God, for forgiveness for all the sins that we have done against You. 
Again, Lord God, we pray that our hearts, our minds, our souls, our spirits will be ready, Lord God, in receiving your word. And I pray, Lord God, that uh, it will encourage us, Lord God, those who are discouraged right now. It will, uh, it will, again, Lord God, establish, Lord God, our footing. And I pray, Lord God, that we are going to have a renewed appreciation, Lord God, of our relationship, Lord God, with you. And to understand, Lord God, Lord, that we are unworthy. But uh, again, Lord God, uh, you, you, you sought for us, Lord God. And no, we had never sought for you, Lord. You are the first one who initiated all these things. And today, Lord God, you have given our life, Lord God. Indeed, Lord, meaning and purpose in the Lord Jesus Christ. In whose name we pray, amen, amen. Again, so uh, um, we are thankful, all right, for, uh, um, again, uh, uh, last week. Um, last week, I would like to congratulate those who were baptized. Come on, one more time. There you go. All right, and uh, I believe that there's four more. There's four more who actually... Uh, uh, who, who weren't able to to uh, to join us last week, and there's also going to be baptism in the Philippines, all right? So um, we don't know yet, but because they they got under ECQ again, all right? So, um, but uh, we were supposed to, um, you know, because it's already summer in the Philippines, so we're still looking uh, forward to that. And of course, uh, that's going to be done in the Philippines. It's going to be done in a Rizal Recreation Center, one of the best places in the whole world. For me, all right? And of course, yep. And um, um, the, those who are coming and with their families, with their families, and of course, we, that's going to be, you know, a one day um, that they're going to spend in Rizal Recreation Center. Now, going back to the message, all right? So here, if I'm going to ask you, how many of you like pressure? Hmm. Have you seen this clip before? Where there's a beauty contest in the Philippines? And she was asked, Right? Do you feel any pressure right now? And she answered, you know, so coyly, you know, I don't feel any pressure right now. <laughs> Remember that? And then she was asked, then she, you know, then she was asked about something, and then she cannot really complete her statement. You remember that about her family and all? Right? And that became actually, it actually became a meme. Because what, you know, but I give her credit, huh? Uh, for her to actually join that contest in being in front of everybody, that's tough, right? That's tough. How many of you, right, you feel that kind of pressure when you are, when you are in front of many people? Some people are afraid or are scared of, uh, what you call that, public speaking, right? Some of you actually are afraid, you know, when... Um, you are afraid when your teacher, you remember that growing up, right? Your teacher will call you for recitation, right? Right? And then you, you don't know what to do. You feel like you want to you wanna go to the bathroom, you know? <laughs> this one, right? Some of you actually feel that kind of pressure when exam week is going to happen, right? And you, 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 you don't know what to do anymore, all right? And the, the, for me, I thrive in pressure. Right? I, uh, I don't know. That's the way I'm wired. I love pressure. As a matter of fact, as a matter of fact, as a matter of fact, no, no. Um, when exam week is going to come, that makes me excited. But actually, the reason for that, I don't think because I'm, I have, I'm having fun during exams, but because it's going to be half day. <laughs> right? yeah. And, and, but, Looking, looking back, I really love pressure. I mean, not really loved it for the, for the sake of it. But there are things, you know, that kind of like it pushes me to do the best that I could. And um, I remember first year high school, I transferred to a new school. And um, so I'm new in, in the school. But one of the things that I really like, um, I, I like to, um, one of the things that you know, going back, I love to take entrance examinations. Entrance exams, you know why? Because almost all entrance exams I took, I got great grades, right? So it's like, for me, that's a positive experience for me. And one of the things also that I remembered when I transferred to this school, I got really high marks. And then while we were there, so they, um, they there's an, ex they, um, a, 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 uh, for the first year, because there's a lot of us, they had to divide us into three sections. 
And I remember, I love that exam, right? And the only thing is that I missed, I almost perfected the exam. The only thing I missed was because I didn't know how to do square root. And that's the only mistake that I had. But, in, and, but when the results came out, can you imagine this? Uh, this is one like of, what, what you call that? Uh, um, like, you know, um, laurel on my, you know, what do you call that? Uh, uh, one of my laurels. <laughs> there you go, right? It, when, the, when the results came out and there was a list in the whole school, it was, it was posted in one of the walls, right? My name is second. Huh? And I don't know how to do square root. Nana. <laughs> so it was during that time. And, and during the time, and I realized that the school I came from, I came from was really a great school, right? For me to actually like, uh, um, have that stock knowledge. So it's like, a, um, you know, so like having that. So I, I was second in that exam. And in, 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 um, so kind of like the teachers noted that, that I was great at that. But then one of the things that became a, uh, um, what you call that, uh, off about that, is because my teachers had volunteered me to all like the, the, the school-wide, you know, um, uh, the only thing that I didn't join um, was spelling bee. I was in social science, I was in science, and even math. Right, and I think I won around uh, these exams. Right, I mean this uh, uh, this contest. I think I won around uh, three during that year. I was first year. I was first year, and um, and then it again happened. So like that, I love the the feeling of that. Right, so I thrived in that. And one more thing that I remembered that gave me that lots of, lots of pressure was when I was I was. Uh, kind of like encouraged to represent our church, right? In a, in a, in a what do you call that? A Bible quiz. I was 15, right, during the time. So they're like the college students. One, the one who won, the one who won was uh, from, from, uh, from uh, was already uh, took basic Bible course in Bible school. And you know what happened? In that, uh, I was 15 during the time. And, uh, you know, um, it happened that I got into the championship. So it's one on one. So every question is like you know um, what you call that instant um, what you call that? what you call that instant death, right? So sudden death, sudden death. There, there you go, right? So it's good. It's Bible quiz. <laughs> so during the time it's sudden death, right? So um, one question we got it right. Second question we got it right. It took around five questions in order to determine the winner. I you know I still remember right, the questions during the time. Um, you know, theological terms, um, adoption, you know, election, predestination. And I was looking at that. I remember those questions. The good thing is, the ones that I reviewed, that's actually the book that the, 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 the ones who had organized used. But at the end, you know, the only question that I missed, right, was this. What is the name of the servant who ran away from Philemon? Right? That's, and I, I couldn't recall his name. That's the one I missed. That, that's why until today, I remember Onesimus, right? How do you pronounce it, Joboy? Yeah, Onesimus, right? Somebody said Onesimus, <laughs> right? And I love, I love pressure all throughout. I love pressure. I thrive even, you know, um, I thrive in pressure. And I have like, you know, and I, I made like, you know, um, schemes in order for me to get out of it. But here's the thing. Right? Some, a lot of people don't like that. Mm. But here's one of the things that I hate about the pressure that I hate. It is this. One of the things that I struggled all throughout was trying to understand, right? Was trying to understand about life. At a very young age, I was serious about that. I was always thinking, why am I here? I was always thinking, what am I going to be? And some of you already know that. That my, my dream growing up was to become a soldier, a doctor, and eventually a politician. And then eventually to become the president of the Philippines. Yeah? Now that dream was already gone. I want now to be the president of the universe. <laughs> right? So, and, uh, so, but the Lord God has a, di a, di a different plan. You know, so, but that's actually, you see, and, and, and this is how I actually put unnecessary pressure on myself. 
Do you know I tried to memorize the encyclopedia? I was thinking I'm going to do that. You know, I was grade three. And, and apparently, I have a friend who's also crazier. You know, he's also as crazy as me, uh, Pastor Viner Rafael. He's already, a, uh, he's my best friend from church. And he's also now a pastor. And he tried to memorize the dictionary. Right? So, uh, you know, um, what, what do you say? How do you say that? Um, same minds, great minds, think alike, no, you know, foolish minds too. <laughs> so, there are times that we don't want that. And one of the things that I don't like, it gives me really, you know, it somehow, it stresses me out thinking of the future. Thinking of the future. Those who are familiar with me know that I am a dreamer. I dream a lot. I talk about vision. I talk about the future, right? And uh, even with my kids, there are things that I'm telling them, and of course, they don't get it. There are times that I become pushy, right, with that. But on myself, that's one thing that it, there are times that it scares me. What's going to happen to me? What's going to happen to my family? What's going to happen to, what's going to, happen to um, you know, to, to, to those who are around me? And so today... Um, the way we are going to go with Galatians 2.20. Galatians 2.20, if you are going to live, right, by the principles in this, this verse, right, it's going to take that unnecessary pressure off. Right, so one. Right, so today, in order to discuss that, I have three ECQs. There you go, all right? Three ECQs. What's ECQ? No, uh, uh, it's a it's a in vogue right now in the Philippines. ECQ in the Philippines is what that what's that? You know, enhance community quarantine. There you go. There you go. Right for us today, it is three existential and crucial questions. These are questions that you need to answer. That every person has us. There's there's a lot. Of existential questions, right? But this one, I believe, these three things we need to understand. Believers or non-believers alike, you and I had asked this question. These questions, I mean, right? So today, we are going to talk about that. So number one, here's the first question that most people would actually want to be answered. Who am I? Who am I? Right? Who am I? That's the basis because the next, the next two, two questions we're going to see is based on that. Who am I? And trying, you know, so this is the question about identity. And today, this is something that is like, you know, in the, in the facets of our, of our society, this is one of those questions. Right? Those, the, that question. And we have what you call, you know, identity politics. That's what they call it. Right? It is a crucial question. Now, let me ask you. Do you know who you are? Right? I remember Joe Boy, and um, he was like around three, four years old. And I had this last piece of strudel. Do you know those? Strudels? Right? It's a, it's, a, it's a dessert. Right? So that's the last piece of strudel. And then he, I was eating that. Right? And I was, about to, I was about to get a bite, to take a bite, I mean. And Joe Boy went to me in his cute way. And then he asked me, Tatay, ano yan? Yeah. So what's that, Tatay? So I said, right? For those who are um, not familiar with that, Tatay is a Filipino word for um, father or papa, daddy, you know. And, and so he asked me. And instead of answering, because I know that he knows that it's a strudel, I know that his intent was to ask from me, right? So I told Joe Boy, who are you? <laughs> so I asked him, who you? Right? I asked him. So, but he, you know, he answered it, you know, you know, in this endearing way. And he said, Ako si Joboy. Ako si Joboy. Anak mo ko. <laughs> right? He, so he answered me that, I am Joboy. I am your son. It is as if that he was telling me, since I am your son, you need to share that strudel to me. Are you getting this? And there are times that we try to force ourselves to discover ourselves, trying to do things and trying to acquire things because it adds to how we feel about ourselves. But the thing is, in this verse it says, I am crucified with Christ. Why is that significant? 
I'm going to go here, right? I hope, um, bear with me as I explain this. Number one in Genesis 1, 27 to 26. This is who you are and who I am. This is who we are. The Bible says in Genesis chapter 1, verse 27, it says, So God created man in his own image. You and I were created in God's image. It's not the physical that is being um, said here, but rather it is our soul. Right? It is our soul. Because the body was given, uh, the, the body was made, I mean formed from the dust. Right? The spirit was given when God breathed. Right? But the, and man became a living soul. So the soul was the one which was created. Right? Now, the soul, the soul of the Lord God, and what is the soul? That is the seat of our personality. And that meaning of that, that uh, you are, God is a thinking being, so you are a thinking being. God is a deciding being. You also have, you, you can make decisions. You can make choices. And God is also an emotional being. Right? But there's one thing though, and angels have those, but there's one thing that is different with man and angels. And what is that? Angels were not created for relationships. Only you and I. Right? So how did God have a relationship? Remember? God the Father. God the Son, God the Holy Spirit, right? God the Holy Spirit. So here, that's why it's in, the, the Bible says that God is love. If the Lord God is not a trinity, if the Lord God is not a trinity, how will they practice love? Have you ever thought of that? Right? So now it's become, it, it makes sense when the Lord God says that. And the Lord God created us to have a relationship with Him. He created us in God's image. And look at the next one because we forget this now. And here's the Lord God, what's He saying? In the image of God, He created Him. Male and female created He them. So the problem with the lot of pressure that we put on ourselves today, the struggle of knowing who you are, it is because in the first place, you don't go to the designer. Right? He had designed us. We cannot define ourselves the way we want it if we don't go to the source of life. So the Lord God definitely says here that we were created in His image. And then He says He, he created us male and female. In the scriptures, in the scriptures, no, there's no way that it's going to be warranted that all these letters, LGBTQ+, a, B, C, D, F, G, H, I, J, K, L, M, N, O, P, right? And all the letters that you put there, you know, these are man's definition, right? But the way the Lord God had defined us, He says there, we were created male and female, right? And then, uh, don't, don't get this, you know, don't take this that I am a homophobe because I said that, right? No, I'm just telling you the truth of the scriptures, and the pressure that you put on yourself because of the way you feel, right? The Lord God is telling us, go back to the design. And then he says in verse 28, then God blessed them. And God said to them, be fruitful and multiply. Fill the earth and subdue it. Have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the birds of the air, and over every living thing that moves on the earth. Can you imagine? The Lord God has given us dominion. He wants you to be fruitful. He wants you to multiply. This is not just talking about procreation. This is talking about the quality of our lives. But something happened. Something happened. In Romans 6.23, the Bible says, For the wages of sin is death. Right? For the wages of sin is death. Sin happened. How? The first identity theft is in the scriptures. Satan. The Lord Jesus Christ called him the, the thief. He came to steal, to kill, and to destroy. He was able to tempt man to go away from the design of God. And the way he tempted man is this way. Remember what he said? You will, the Lord God doesn't want that because you will be like God. In the first place, we were created in the image of God. He was not. So we stole that. What did he steal? Dominion. He took it away from us. And because of that, sin came. And because of that, curse came. And because of that, death came. We were separated from God because of that. We were separated from our purpose. We were separated from, you know, the blessing of the Lord God. Now, but praise the Lord God because the Bible says, 
but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. You know, because of sin, I got lost. Because of sin, I lost my identity. And that's why there's this pressure on us to try to discover or make a name for us. To make a name for ourselves. Mm. To make a name for ourselves. And the Lord God is telling us, I am crucified with Christ. And for me, that is freeing. That is freeing. Why? Because I don't have, I don't have to put pressure on myself in order to prove myself to the world. I don't have to look for myself. Because if I try to look for myself, somebody said, if you look inside you, look inside you, uh, look within you, you are going to be, uh, you're going to be depressed. Yeah. Right? When you look out around you with all the things that are happening right now, you're going to be distressed. Yeah. Yes. You're going to be stressed out through, right? And then somebody said, you look to the Lord Jesus Christ and you will find rest. Hmm. I lost my identity and trying to retrieve that, trying to make an identity for myself, that's a lot of pressure. And that's a lot of pressure too. Right? And now look at what the Lord God says here in Romans 6, 5 to 11. For if we have been united together in the likeness of His death, certainly we shall also be in the likeness of His resurrection. Did you see that? Because I am now dead in the Lord Jesus Christ. I am crucified with Christ. Right? What's the meaning of that? I will further explain that. And in verse 6 it says, Knowing this, that our old man, that you, your old nature, was crucified with him, that the body of sin might be done away with, that we should no longer be slaves of sin. Because whether we like it or not, when we had sinned, we had become slaves of sin. That's why we are not free. That's why it's hard to do great things because sin pulls you down. And there are times that you have no choice but to sin. That was our sinful nature. Right? And, and, the, and that's why there are times right now that you are, that you are, uh, that you are amazed with the, with, the, with the gross things that people are able to do. Don't you know that you and I, apart from the grace of God, we are also bound somehow. We, are all, we have the propensity to do wrong things. Right? In the Philippines, we even have, a, we even have that song, you know? Gusto kong bumayet? Di ba? Nasa Diyos ang awa. Nasa tao ang gawa. Right? Um, in English, yes. <laughs> it says that, it says that you know, um, I try to do, I try to be good, but I, I'm having a hard time doing it. I know that the, the, the Lord, uh, the mercy, uh, grace, mercy, awa, awa, mercy. Right? Mercy is from the Lord, but um, gawa is, uh, I need to act on it. We understand that we don't have that capacity, right? Some of you struggled with addiction before, or maybe right now, right? And you know that there's no good thing that is going to bring, that's going to bring in your life, but you still do it. You fail. You try better next time, but you still fail. Some of you, you know, some of you were, um, you know, into wrong relationships. What do I mean? You, or, you are married, and then you still have a girlfriend. Mm. Yep. <laughs> and and here's the thing. And do you know that I still date my ex-girlfriend? Mm. Yep. I still date my ex-girlfriend. Yep. Because she's now my wife. There you go. That's cheesy. <laughs> That's corny. All right. And here's that pressure of making a name for myself. That one, that Ronald, is crucified with Christ. Right? I don't have to make a name for myself. Why? Because I am crucified with Christ. And look at what he says here in verse 7. He says, For he who has died has been freed from sin. From sin. Now if we died with Christ, we believe that we shall also live with him, knowing that Christ, having been raised from the dead, dies no more. Death no longer has dominion over him. For the death that he died, he died to sin once for all. But the life that he lives, he lives to God. And this life, listen in verse 11. Likewise you also, children, listen. Reckon yourselves to be dead indeed to sin. 
the meaning of I am crucified with Christ, I am dead to sin, I am dead to the world, I am dead to self. Right? That's the meaning of that. Why? Because I need to, last week's baptism, that's a picture of that. The Ronald who was sinful, who was a sinner, who was living for himself, trying to make a name for himself, now he died, was buried with the Lord Jesus Christ, and now he rose with him. Look at what he says. But alive to God in Christ Jesus our Lord. You try to look for yourself, try to make a name for yourself, try to look for your own identity outside of God, you will lose yourself. But lose yourself for the sake of Christ and the Gospels, the Lord Jesus Christ said, then you will find yourself. You will find yourself in Christ. So who am I? Right? I am crucified with Christ. And the next one, what am I living for? The next ECQ, what am I living for? Right, purpose. Uh, this is the, uh, the, there's actually a, um, there's a, a Filipino song, a novelty one that became popular, I think, in the 90s. Paano ang puso ko kung wala ka? Right, but do you know that that was based on another song? Right, uh, well, I, I was not alive yet, I don't know. But that, uh, the one who actually, that tune for that song was taken from a song of Eddie Peregrina. Do you know him? You know him? Wow, yeah. Eddie Peregrina, he died young. He's one of a, he became a popular singer in the Philippines, but he died young. And one of the songs that he popularized was this song. What am I living for if not for you? Yeah. Right? So, and this is actually a question that you and I will always have. What is the purpose of my life? And look at what the Lord God says. So here it says, Nevertheless I live, yet not I, but Christ who lives in me. Mm. So why is this talking about purpose? Look, right in Colossians 1, 27 to 29. To them God willed to make known what are the riches of glory of this mystery among the Gentiles. Who are Gentiles? Gentiles, these are people who are not Jews, right? So the Lord Jesus Christ, when he was alive, he was asked. Then he said, I was sent by God to the Jews. But then Paul, remember after that, he said, but the crucifixion of the Lord Jesus Christ opened everything for us. He was rejected by his own people, but it opened it to us. So the Lord Jesus Christ declared, but, um, but who receives him, right? We, but those who receive him, they have the authority to become Children of God. Only to those who believe in His name. And look at what He says here. So we are Gentiles. And look at what He says here. Who is in you, which is Christ in you. <clears throat> is Christ in you. And then it says, the hope of glory. Him we preach, warning every man, and teaching every man in all wisdom, that we may present every man perfect in Christ Jesus. Did you hear that? Did you hear that? The meaning of that, complete. Right? Every man, complete in Christ. So the way you live your life, if you're thinking that I'm going to pursue this, or maybe if I have lots of money, then I will, if I have lots of money, then I will find purpose. Maybe if I'm going to have a good job. Maybe if I'm going to become a CEO. Right? Maybe if I'm going to, to get married to a very great person. Right? Maybe if I have 12 kids. <laughs> right? And all that. We actually ask that. Maybe I will find my purpose. But how many of us? Right? If you had observed, there are people who try to pursue fame, power, glory, money. Mm. And how many of them, how many of those who find there that when they got there, they found it empty? How many of those who became rich, famous at young ages, that got addicted to drugs because of the pressure? Hmm. How many of those tried to, to kill themselves? How many of those OD'd? Yeah, what's OD'd? Um, overdosed. Yeah. How many of those had overdosed? Why? Because trying to look for meaning 
in life. Mm. Right? That's why, and then in verse 29 it says, To this end I also labor, striving according to his working, which works in me mightily. That power, that purpose, I live by that, and I don't leave it on my own. It is the power that is in me. He's talking about the Holy Spirit particularly here. But remember, because Christ lives in me. Mm. I don't have to look for that purpose because as I walk along the one who had created me, as I abide with him, as I walk with him, you know, then the Lord God shows me the way. Just imagine this. Remember, I was thinking, I'm now looking you know, on, on hindsight. Um, I was, you know, I was thinking that if I ever became a, a, someone in military, and then I became a politician, I will be a corrupt one, right? Because of the way I was thinking before. And I actually had a glimpse of that. In high school and college, I trained for CAT, Citizens Army Training, and then the ROTC in college. I became an instant officer in college. But I was abusive. I really was abusive. I remember, so we have like these uh, cadets, right? And I know that they're going to be in one of the stalls. Remember those who grew up in the Philippines? Burger Machine and Minute Burger. And when, you see, when you see Burger Machine, there's Minute Burger. right? So I know that our cadets, those who are under me, are going to be there during break. So I would go there. I will not, I will not spend a cent or a centavo. Why? Because all those burgers of those cadets, I will have the first bite. <laughs> and during the time, I still remember somebody tried to hide. Right? When I caught him, I bit, you know, half of the burger. And he was looking at me and said, sir. <laughs> and I didn't care. You, you know, that's the propensity of my heart. Right? That's why the Jeremiah said, the heart is deceitful above all things. So that's why when people say, in order to discover yourself, follow your heart. Right? If that's the principle, if there's a pastor who would tell you that, follow your heart, run away. Run away because the Bible says, the heart is deceitful above all things and desperately wicked. Who can know it? The one who also, who, of course, the answer there, the one who knows it is the Creator. Is God Himself. Mm. Right? So for those ladies, how many of you had been broken hearted? Because you're always like saying, you followed your heart. <laughs> yeah? How many times? Because I thought He's the one. He's the one, two, three, four. And then you already have 24 boyfriends. And you still haven't found the one. All right? But again, the Lord God is telling us here, in pursuing your purpose outside God, you will never find it. You will never find it. Now, the life which I now live in the flesh. So he says there, I'm crucified with Christ. Right? Nevertheless, I live. But it's not me anymore who's living. It is Christ who lives in me. Right? And Christ who lives through me. Now, look at what it says in the next one. The life which I now live in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God. Right? I live by the faith, trusting. Trusting the Lord Jesus Christ and obeying Him. Right? I live by faith in the Son of God, the way this should be translated. And look at what it says. Right? What's the meaning of that? 2 Timothy chapter 1, verse 12 to 14. 2 Timothy chapter 1, verse 12 to 14. Paul said, For this reason, I also suffer these things. The Lord Jesus Christ had said that the world had persecuted him. And then he says, right, for those who are going to follow him, you are also going to suffer the same. But here's what the Lord Jesus Christ also said. In his word, he said that, you know, but because you are not of the world, right? But you are living. So somebody actually says that we are, 
you know, the Christian life is out of this world. Yeah, you are in a different realm to take that. But look at furthermore what the Lord God says. For this reason I also suffer these things. Nonetheless, nevertheless, I am not ashamed. Right? The Lord God says, the Lord God said that God has not given us the spirit of fear or timidity, but has given us love, power, and sound mind. Next thing. Look at the next verse. Right? And he says here, I mean the, the, the next uh, the next statements. For I know whom I have believed, and I am persuaded that he is able to keep what I have committed to him. Until that day, what's the meaning of that? That's my life. That if I had committed it to the Lord, the Lord is able to handle it better than I could. That's why, you know, that phrase that we are using, kapit lang, right? Um, in English, what's kapit lang? Hold on. Hold on, right? Hold on. And, you know, kapit lang is not a good principle for a Christian. Because if you are the one who's trying to hold on to the Lord God, you will lose your grip. But praise the Lord God because you are not the one who was required by God to hold on to Him. It is God who's holding you in His hand. Right? Isn't that a sobering and, you know, a comforting thought? He's got the whole world in His hands. There you go. Right? And He's got you and me in His hands. Right? Now, if it's just my power, my ability, I can't hold on to the Lord God. Mm, I cannot. I cannot, you know, but thank the Lord God because God is able to hold that which I have committed to Him against that day. Next, in verse 13, hold fast. Look at what it says. Hold fast the pattern of sound words which you have heard from me. So the meaning of that, those things, you actually have to, to this is a different kind of, you know, you can hold on to the Lord God, but He said that you can hold fast, right? And He says, what are those? Those are the promises in the Scriptures, Mm, by the way, right? So somebody, it's becoming a pilot. There's somebody uh, who was actually, uh, who said that the Bible, this is becoming a popular, you know, um, a popular, uh, what you call that? A uh, dogma or teaching. You know, that the Word of God, the Bible is not the Word of God. Right? And here's, here's a slight way of putting it. Some people, you will hear this. They say, uh, the Bible contains the Word of God. Right? The Bible contains the Word of God. That statement, you know, we believe that the Bible is the written Word of God. The Lord Jesus Christ is the Word. Right? He is the living Word. We believe that. But He gave us the Scriptures. He gave us the Scriptures. It is everything is God-breathed, inspired. It is the Word of God is alive. Right? So we believe that. And uh, again, uh, this coming uh, Wednesday... Um, in Power Up, we're going to be discussing that more. And not only that, do you know that from this, when you doubt the Word of God, you know what happens? Then you start to also doubt a lot of other things that we find in the Scriptures. Number one, right? Do you know that they are now teaching that hell is not real? It is only figurative. So on Wednesday, we're going to talk about that. And do you know that there are people who are saying, you know, and this really a good concept you're going to think about it. I like to hear that. Do you know that the, there's a stand that every, eventually everybody will be in heaven? Hmm. So that's what we call universalism. Right? And do you know that there are beliefs now that you don't have to repent? Yes. And do you know that there's no rapture? There's no second coming anymore. It already happened. That's how they stand. So these are the things that we are going to talk about this coming Wednesday. That's the danger when you don't hold fast to the words of the Lord God. Now it says, in faith and love which are in Christ Jesus. In verse 14, that good thing which was committed to you, keep by the Holy Spirit who dwells in us. Do you see this? The Holy Spirit, the Lord Jesus Christ who is in you. That takes pressure off me trying to prove myself to the world because I don't need to. I don't need to. So pastor, what about my dreams? How many of you, if you're going to be honest about that, how many of you had dreamed about something when you were growing up? I dreamed to be like this, I dreamed to be like that, that you are that. Well, some of you may be. But how many of us, that when we finally got our dreams, we got disappointed because you found out it's not all it's cracked up to be. Right? 
Some of you, your dream, your only dream is to get to the United States of America in New York City. There you go. New York. Mm. And when you finally got here, and you want, we want, and one of the things I know, one, one pastor was interviewed in a, in a in U.S. embassy in the Philippines. He was asked, why do you, his, his destination is Hawaii. So he was asked, why do you want to go to Hawaii? Because I want to see snow. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, and, and just imagine that. And some of you, that's your dream. I want, I want to experience snow. You know, there you go. And then finally you got the snow. <laughs> itchy, itchy. <laughs> right? And finally you, you, you were there. And you saw it. The first thing, and you even like stuck your tongue out to taste the snow. And you were so happy. Then the next day, after the snow, now it becomes freezing, and then it turns to ice, and then you actually, after like two, three, four snows, right? So what do you do? What do you say? I hate snow, <laughs> right? And there are so many things in life that you are trying to find purpose outside of God. You will never find it. But trust yourself in the hands of of God who had designed you what created you then you will find yourself and your purpose in Christ hmm. if the Lord God that revealed that to me when I was younger that I'm going to become a pastor I would have run away right the things that I had experienced in the ministry right and even today you know the things that we there are so many times that you are in ministry ministry if the Lord God has not called you to become a pastor, right, don't try ministry. It is frustrating. But praise the Lord God because even out of those frustrations, the Lord God had made me grow. Mm. Isn't it obvious? Mm. But the thing is, again, it takes pressure off when you understand that living in Christ, that Christ is living in you and you are living in Christ. Right? Next point, the next question, the last ECQ that we have for today. What am I worth? Value. Have you ever asked that question? Is my life worth anything? Hmm. Don't you think that puts a lot of pressure to a lot of people? Hmm. How many of you have ever asked that question? What are you worth? Right? In this week, um, in Forbes magazine, do you know that there are 15 Filipinos who made it to who made it to the the top billionaires in the world? But they miss someone. The name of that someone is Jomar Pagandiban. Yeah. Mm. Because the list is only, I think the list is only like around 500. Jomar is 501. <laughs> yeah. And, but oh, kidding aside, uh, I mean, uh, that's, that's, that's a joke because, you know, don't private message Jomar and then, you know, ask for donations. Yeah. Right. But he started donating last night. <laughs> yeah. I would like to thank the sponsor of my daughter. She's starting to learn basketball. And somebody bought her shoes, um, socks, shorts, shirt, ball. Mm. Right? But I want to remind you, how about the father? <laughs> You're spoiling my kids too much. But look at what the Lord God says here. I live by the faith of the Son of God. I live in faith in the Son of God. And look at what it says. Do you know that this is, the, this is the only verse in the scriptures that is particular about that? That it says, who love me? Who loved me? There was somebody who asked that in Bible school. Because it says, for God so loved the world. But how am I assured that it is me? That is loved by the Lord God. Here, in Galatians 2.20. Who loved me? And look at what it says. And the proof of that love, he gave himself for me. He gave himself for me. Right? And here's what I realize. As I grow 
I thought that I am worth something. I am existing. I made a name for myself. I'm really being good at the things that I am doing. Right? I try to be the best in the things that I do. But that's too much pressure. That's too much pressure. And I know that my wife can, re can, can, can really relate to this. She always wanted to vie for number one. Right? But then the pains that are inside you, they are never gone. It's still there. But you're trying to cover those. But here's one thing. No matter how much name or how big the name that you made for yourself, here's what the Bible says. What does it profit a man if he gains the whole world but loses his own soul? Right? Now, in Romans, I remember, I, I understand this. In Romans 7, 18, it says, in Romans 7, 18, it says, For I know that in me, that is in my flesh, nothing good dwells. The world will actually tell you that you are good. The Bible tells otherwise. You are not. Right? And look at what it says here. For to will is present with me, but how to perform what is good, I do not find. I understand that I am unworthy. There's nothing good in me that God should so desire. I am sinful. I am a sinner. And I didn't want to have anything to do with God before. But praise the Lord God, because He is merciful. Because He is loving. For God so loved the world. That he gave his only begotten son. That whosoever believes in him shall never perish but have everlasting life. The Lord God is pursuing a relationship with me. And who am I? Right? If I'm going to think about it. What is in me that God would desire? What is in me that he, that he didn't have? That didn't come from him? That's why it makes sense when the Bible said. Do not think of yourselves higher or better than others. Because in the grand scheme of things, we are just a speck of dust. Right? Can you imagine? Right? If you are going to, on earth right now, the Lord God is looking on earth, right? Or looking at earth. And where are you? You are not even a period. And now, compare that to how big the universe is. But the Lord God is telling you, I love you. I gave myself for you. For me. You know, there are so many times that I cry in worship before I didn't understand that. But as I understand that the Lord God that loved me, right? And now I praise the Lord God because I can love Him back. You know, and in John it says there, because I mean, we, we, we love God because He first loved us. He pursued me. What's in me? Right? Look at what it says in Psalm, verse eight, uh, Psalm chapter 8, 3 to 5. This is the psalmist who was talking, and he said, When I consider your heavens, the work of your fingers, the moon and the stars which you have ordained, who have placed in the sky, in the universe, I mean, in space, who is man, or what is man, that you are mindful of him? Can you imagine? God is thinking of you. Right? And then next one, he says, And the son of man that you visit him, That you care for him. For you have made him a little lower than the angels. And you have crowned him with glory and honor. Reminds me of that verse again in Colossians. That it says when the Lord Jesus Christ appears. When the Lord Jesus Christ appears. We shall also appear with him in glory. Do you know in the Old Testament. The father declared I will not share my glory to another. But because you and I are in Christ, right? When the, at the, you know, after the second coming, when everything is settled after that, remember when the Lord Jesus Christ comes and says, when He comes, when He appears, you shall appear with Him in glory. That one that He was not willing to share and now is being to shared with those who are in the Lord Jesus Christ, right? So the, the Spirit witnesses to our spirit, that we are children of God. And if children, we are co-heirs with Christ. Right? Co-heirs with Christ. You know, I have nothing to contribute that did not come from God. But look at what the Lord God says. The Lord God says, I loved you and I gave myself for you. So, what is my value? What is my worth? Until I had Christ, I am worth nothing. But since I am in Christ, 
And since I have Christ, Christ loved me. Christ valued me. Right? So thus, how much am I worth? I am worth this much. The Lord Jesus Christ shed His blood for me. Hmm. 2 Corinthians 5.14 For the love of Christ compels us because we judge thus that if one died for all, then all are dead. Right? Then all died. And He died for all that those who live should no longer live for themselves but for Him who died for them and rose again. And rose again. Remember, remember what it said in Romans? That we who are dead to ourselves, dead to sin, dead to the world. And he says that we had also risen with him. So we are living resurrection lives. If you want to understand that more, go back to the message last week. Right? Our Easter message talks, uh, talked about that. And here's one thing. Again, the Lord God doesn't need anything. That's what the scripture says. The Lord God didn't need me. The Lord God didn't need you. The Lord God doesn't need us. Right? But here's the thing. That the Lord God wants you. The Lord God wanted me. Right? He didn't need me. He wanted me. And He paid for me. Hmm. Reminds us of the three R's. Right? In Christ positive, you are renewed, you are redeemed, you are restored. Hmm. Galatians 2.20 Right? I am crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live. Yet not I, but Christ lives in me. And the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God who loved me and gave Himself for me. Pressure's off. Right? Pressure is off. Does that mean I don't have to perform? Yes, I still need to do that. Right? But now, I'm not trying to do that in order to have an identity. I am doing it because I'm already identified. Right? I am identified in Christ. I am identified with Christ. And uh, Timothy Keller, the past, uh, you know, he's the retired pastor of Redeemer Presbyterian Church. He is a good author. Uh, look for his books. Um, one of that is uh, one of the favorite books that I had as uh, I had read is uh, the Prodigal God, and he said this: "The world says you are loved because of what you do. Hmm. Jesus says you can now do all things because you are loved. Hmm. Yeah, that's great to to know. He says again. Let me repeat that: the world says you are loved because of what you do." And that's a lot of pressure to perform. But listen here. Jesus says you can now do all things. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me because you are loved. In conclusion, John chapter 3 verse 16, it says, For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son that whosoever believes in Him shall never perish but have everlasting life. Now, that's John 3.16. Let's go to 1 John 3.16. And 1 John 3.16 says, By this we know love, because He laid down His life for us. Hmm. That brings us to John 3.16. And we also ought to lay down our lives for the brethren. So John 3.16 is talking about God's love for us. 1 John 3.16 is now understanding that love that you had already received and now you extend it toward others. Now in verse 18, it says, My little children, let us not love in word or in tongue only, but in deed and in truth. But in deed and in truth. Right? Like us, I know that you know, that we had Right? We finished our winning season. Our winning season was capped with our Easter service. And right now, we are in what we call um, consolidation or preservation season. Right? The Lord God that put you, if the only objective of being saved is just to bring you to heaven, 
once you had received the Lord Jesus Christ, the Lord God could have taken you home right away. But since you are here, do you know that your life has a purpose? And do you know that one of those purposes is that you extend God's love to those who are around you? Okay. And let me ask you today, do you find your Christian life boring? Do you find your life, even though you had been in Christ for quite a while, you had received Him maybe like, maybe more than 10 years already, but you find it that it is routinary? It is not as exciting as before. Maybe it's because you are trying to answer these three questions. Who am I? What am I living for? What is my worth? Apart from Christ. So let me encourage you, if you are a believer, if you are a believer and your life has no excitement, go through Galatians 2.20 once again. And I pray that you are going to understand. Right? Let your identity be Christ. Let your purpose be in Christ. Because Christ valued you. Christ loved you. Well, and I pray that you will live your life for the Lord Jesus Christ. But for those who are wondering, I don't want to end this message without again inviting. Do you have a relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ? Are you sure that you are safe? Are you sure that when you die, you're going to go to heaven? If not, I would like to invite you. The Lord Jesus Christ tells you that I had died for you. I had come to die on the cross of Calvary, but I rose again. And He said, For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son, that whosoever believes in Him shall never perish, but have everlasting life. So do you want a purposeful, meaningful, and a life that is exciting? Right? It starts with you repenting of your sin and then opening your heart to receive the Lord Jesus Christ as your Lord and your Savior. Right, so if that's the desire of your heart, I'm going to close in prayer. In the middle of the prayer, I'm going to be inviting you. If you want to receive Christ, pray with me. Right, so let's go to the Lord in prayer. Lord God, we thank you. Lord God, for your love. Thank you, Lord God, that you had created this, Lord God, in your image. Indeed, Lord, a great privilege. And Lord God, thank you. Lord God, that you said that two of servers in Christ, Lord, shall be shall be free. And him whom the Son sets free is free indeed. And let those who are redeemed say so. I'm redeemed. I'm redeemed. Praise the Lord. So today, Lord God, we come. Thanking you, Lord God, that we are in Christ. And Christ lives in us. And now, Lord God, I pray that we will, Lord, live our lives for him who died for us and who had risen again. Thank you, Lord God, for the privilege. And I pray, Lord, today that if there's someone who didn't know you yet, who don't know you yet, that today that person will come to your saving knowledge. Now, if that's you and you are trying to really think, what is the purpose of my life? You can't find it apart from Christ. Sin had stolen a lot from us. But there's forgiveness in Christ. There is wholeness in the Lord Jesus Christ. So today, He's saying, Sinner, come home. I have loved you and I have given myself for you. Would you receive my love? So today, if you want to be saved, if you want to have a relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ, pray with me. Right? Again, it's not the prayer that is going to save you. It's not my prayer that's going to save you. But it's rather the grace of God that you are now receiving in faith. So believe in your heart and say with your mouth that Jesus Christ indeed is Lord. And His promise for the belief in the heart and with the mouth confession is turned unto salvation. The Lord God is telling you that is telling you that will you open your heart to me today receive him 
as your Lord and your Savior. If that's the desire of your heart, right, pray with me. Pray with me loudly. Receive Christ today. Right, let's pray. Lord God, right, come and follow me in prayer. Right, don't mind the people who are around you. Pray loudly with me. Lord God, thank you for loving me. Thank you, Lord, for forgiveness of all my sins. Lord, I recognize that I had sinned against you. Please forgive me. Lord Jesus Christ, thank you, Lord, for dying on the cross of Calvary. And today, Lord, I now open my heart and I receive you as my Lord and my Savior. Thank you, Lord, for your promise of eternal life that you are going to live in me and may I live my life for you. From now on, you're my God. You're my Lord. You're my Savior. You're my Master. You're my, my boss. You are my King. Thank you, Lord, that you had given me eternal life and life to the fullest. In Jesus Christ's name, Amen. Amen. Galatians 2.20 I am crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live. Yet not I, but Christ lives in me. In the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God, who loved me and gave himself for me. Pressures off. And that's our message for today. In Jesus' name, Amen. Amen. in that decision and also to grow in that relationship with God. So again, thank you and let us know um, uh, about that wonderful decision that you have made. Yes. And Amen. of course, like a reminder for this, um, the whole month of April, yeah, and since we are done with our winning season, now it is time for our preservation. Yeah. And preservation. Our consolidation, our follow-up. So make sure... Um, 144 primary, especially that you guys follow up with your VIP. Yay! And, and, and of course, for our <laughs> further announcement, let's stay tuned. Lastly, don't forget to take a picture, a selfie, or a groupie, um, and send it to your cell leader or to us. Send it to um, our Lightcast page. We want to see your beautiful faces while you're worshiping with us today. Again, church, thank you for worshiping with us, and have a blessed week to all.